Hey guys, and welcome back to Trimmer Trails. If you're new here, my name is TJ. For you other guys that have been around for a minute, hope everybody's doing well. We have been out in this series exploring a bunch of different stuff in Wyoming. And right now we're right on the border of Yellowstone, the Grand Tetons, and the Wind River Range. This is a cool trail that's gonna get you to some really cool uh, camping spots that are kind of away from the crowd. What I've noticed so far in my travels is that the closer you get to the national park, even on forest land stuff, trying to find a camping spot is almost impossible. So I'm hoping this trail might be a good place for you to explore if you guys wanna come out and do some camping around the national parks. The trail today is called Flagstaff, and what I've been told is that on some of the spots, once you get towards the top, you're actually able to see all of the Teton Valley and a little bit of Yellowstone. So here's the overview, and then we will jump up on the trail and check this one out. All right, the Flagstaff Trail. There's really not a major town around it. I guess Jackson Hole is probably the closest. Really, the Grand Teton National Park is going to be only 10 minutes away. The trail itself is 42.2 miles. It could take you about four hours to, if you just want to go straight through. Uh, we spent about 20 hours out there camping. The trail itself is just a graded dirt road on the main. And then the offshoots are going to be deep with mud holes, two treks, steep grades. You know, your typical stuff. Pick your poison. Modes I used were four auto, mud and ruts, and four low rock crawl when I was coming back down mountain passes. You can do the main trail in two-wheel drive. For highlights, there were several out here. We Really, I think the main highlight is going to be the remote camping. We get to an alpine lake that we spend the night on. There are some viewpoints of the Tetons that we show you, mountain creeks and meadows. It's just a really chill place away from the crowds. Please remember that our cameras have stabilizers on them so the hills are not going to be as steep and the bumps are not going to be as rough. Also, remember that we view this and every trail at the end of our video. Now, let's go. The main road is really well graded, really chill out here. We were uh, on another trail just a few hours ago before uh, this video, and it was just slammed with tourists and two-door sedans. And it's like we're just, we're only like 16 miles further away and it opens back up and I feel alone again, which is awesome. That's why I love being out and exploring and overlanding is getting kind of away from the crowd. Anyways, we've turned on to a side shoot now that is not part of the Flagstaff Trail. And this trail looks like it's gonna go, it's just a little two trek, but it looks like it's gonna go all the way and butt up to Teton National Park, but still in forest land. So I'm curious to see what's out here. We just passed that big mud puddle that you saw, so I think that may be a sign of what's to come. But we're gonna go test out the trimmer and see if we can make it to the end of this fork because I have a feeling that the views are probably gonna be really incredible. Let's go. One of the main takeaways from doing a bunch of different trails up in Wyoming and up in this part of the region is that the mud is a real contender even in the middle of summer. Now on your main trails you're not going to have much of an issue because it's usually rocked bottom but when you get off on these two treks if the ground is already wet and saturated it can be a nightmare and you can get stuck very easily. The soil is kind of like a sandy soil a lot of times so it's, you can get into some really deep ruts and some really deep mud. Obviously it goes without saying make sure you have a capable vehicle and make sure you don't get off on these side chutes when it's been super wet.
Well, it's close to the view that I was going for, this wide open meadow. This has to be some old, old structure off in the distance. Somebody lived here probably a hundred years ago or so. There's no markers or anything. The trail itself was a little bit fun, a little bit challenging. So some of the mud holes have rock under them and other of the mud holes do not. And so you don't know which mud hole you're gonna get. So, you know, I'm, I'm keeping constant power as I go through and I'm trying not to slam into the mud. But man, the drive was pretty fun. This was a couple miles. I didn't get the exact mileage. I think it was about three miles from the offshoot from the main road. Nonetheless, it is beautiful out here way off in the distance. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Uh, that is the beginning of the Teton Range. Now this trail continues up into the mountains even further and it's going to continue to go more towards that westerly side. So I'm hoping that we get some more large expansive views of the Tetons and this whole mountain range. So far, this has been a blast. Let's jump up back on the trail, get back through all these mud puddles and everything, get back onto the main offshoot and see what else we can find. Thanks for coming along so far. What a magical place. We are on the side of a mountain. We took the trail as far as we could possibly take it, and it put us right here on the other side of this massive valley. I'm sure the camera's not gonna show up because the sun's pointing right into it. This is the best shot I could get for you. But way off in the distance, hopefully it shows up. Those are the Tetons, the Grand Teton right there. And then you have this massive valley. That lake that we saw, I think we're gonna spend the night there. We're having so much fun out here. It is so peaceful and beautiful that we're gonna go down there and camp for the night and then finish up the trail in the morning. But guys, put this one on your list. I'm telling you, we've seen only one other person out here today, whereas just 13, 14 miles on the other side of this mountain range where all the national parks are, it was insanely crowded. Man, I'm glad we found this trail. What a beautiful spot. to us what a beautiful place to have slept for the night man i slept like a baby i've been trying to figure out a way to keep all of these spots that we stay at that you see on the videos uh, so that you guys can get out to these camp spots i don't want to do a paywall i know a lot of the big overlander guys 
they do paywalls and you have to pay their Patreon or something to get to a campsite. And that's never what this channel has been about. That was the whole reason kind of why I started this channel was they, I would see these awesome trails, but they wouldn't tell me where it was or what it looked like. So I'm going to keep thinking on that. That was my first thought this morning. Nonetheless, we're going to tear down. We are over halfway done with this trail. We did 25 miles yesterday and only like three hours or so. Just a quick reminder, we are just on the other side of the Teton Range. So the national parks are literally, I could throw a rock. Well, not quite, but you get my drift. If you want to do the national parks and then drive over here and camp and get away from the crowds, this is a great opportunity. And that's why I wanted to film these trails in this series because you're so close to the national parks that within 30 minutes, you can be on a trail and you can just get up onto a trailhead somewhere for a five minute drive or something and find a place to camp. You don't have to come all the way in like we did to this beautiful place. But if you do, it's well worth it. All right, we're gonna tear down camp and get up on the trail. editing this video there's one thing that I failed to mention that's really important out here in northern Wyoming western Wyoming Montana make sure that you have bear spray when we got off the trail this day we were actually at a gas station and they had a grizzly bear there that morning we didn't see any bears when we were camping but please make sure you have bear spray or a gun something to protect yourself when you're up in these parts all right let's finish it up Well, there you have it guys, the Flagstaff Road or Flagstaff Trail. This was a pretty cool little trail, about 35 miles or so, all the way up into the mountains. We are now on the other side of the range, and just behind the camera, I can barely see the peak tops of the Wind River Range, which is where we're going to go next, so really excited about that. The main Flagstaff Trail itself is super easy. Anybody can get up into these mountains and go camping. There is nothing technical at all on this, which leads us right into the reviews. Of course, we do everything in a one to five format, being fun, fear, technical, and scenery. For fun, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. It was close enough to the national parks where the day prior, before we started filming this video, we went to Tetons, we checked it out, and then we got away from the crowds and we got up into the mountains and didn't see another person all day long, camped out at that beautiful lake. So for fun, I had a blast. I'm going to give it a four. For fear, not a fearful trail at all. Obviously the side chute, there was some really deep mud in spots. So if you're gonna plan to do some of the side chutes, just be aware that you're gonna have some deep mud that you're gonna have to contend with. As far as high clearance, I didn't feel like I really needed that with the mud. So for fear, I'm just gonna give it a two just because you could get stuck if it's really snowy or something up here. But other than that, nothing to be scared of. That leads us right into technical, pretty much what I just said. At the time of filming this, we are into August. Uh, I know they had some decent snowfall, but there is gonna be a lot of mud to contend with, especially if you get into the offshoots. As far as the main trail itself though, even though there are some mud puddles, the ground below or the trail itself is a hard rock, so you're not gonna have any sliding or ruts or anything. The technical main trail itself is gonna be just a one. Anybody can get up here. You can also pull a small RV trailer up here if you want to. There are numerous places to camp. 
As far as the offshoots though, the mud was different. It wasn't a hard rock. A lot of it was that really soft, sticky mud. So plan accordingly if you want to go mudding, as you can see from the truck. For the offshoots, I'm gonna give a technical rating of two just because of the mud. And for the main road, like I said, technical rating of one. That leads us into my favorite category, scenery. I thought it was really beautiful. It wasn't like a broad, crazy, take your breath away vista, but it was just like a good time up in the mountains. And especially getting to the lake was really awesome. Of course, we took you to the very top of the one mountain where you could see the Tetons over the range. That was beautiful. I'm gonna say that the scenery, all in all, is gonna get us a three. We still got a lot of daylight left. It's only 11 a.m. as I'm filming this, so we're gonna go get up on another trail once we get to town, maybe wash the truck, get some fuel, and then get back up into the mountains on the other side. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below. I'll do my best to answer it for you. And until next time, guys, we hope to see you out here on the trails. Bye.